Today's adventure begins, like many great adventures do, with missing video footage. I decided to start making some creeper seeds. To make creeper seeds, I needed a creeper heart, which is an extremely rare drop. Not wanting to simply hunt monsters, I created a Thomcraft wand, an iron-capped wand, to collect the little rainbow orbs you sometimes see flying out of monsters. These orbs are primal aspect orbs, containing magic that can be used with Thomcraft when stored in a wand. While farming, I encountered mysterious map, which upon right-clicking it gave me coordinates and a promise of great treasure. So this is the place. The only thing I see nearby is a straw man. Maybe it's a little bit downwards, I guess. I'll try digging here. I don't know. It's just a sheet of paper I randomly found on a monster. Maybe it is a lie. That would be depressing. Let's just go straight down. I know, I know, that's bad news. Yeah, let's... Let's do it slightly safer. Hello. Good thing we did do it slightly safer. I should make those decisions faster. Come on, where's the path down? There we go. I should have packed more torches. Okay. Nothing seems to be around. Coordinates were further this way. I think I picked up some charcoal along the way. Because I had to stop to craft a boat. Hold still. Thank you for your cooperation. Oh, you have another friend. I see my services are in high demand. I think this might have been a wild goose chase. I mean, this is a pretty neat cave and all. But it's nothing special. Wouldn't call it a treasure. Let's find those coordinates. It's 760, 1120. 
Let's just, like, dig down to bedrock. That's better. Okay, down to bedrock. Now we want seven sixty. there. Well, <sighs> I think the valuable lesson we learned today is don't trust random scraps of paper you find on a decaying corpse. That's a good lesson. I should have learned that already. It's a good thing I can pretty much find my way home just by heading for zero, zero. The base is big enough and it's close enough to spawn that I can find my way home from there. Alright. Time to make some seeds. Ah yes, I thought I would just introduce you all to another tool I have in my arsenal. The Assembly Halo. This thing, at its base form, its graphics are kind of screwing up, it's kind of like a mobile crafting table. You just right-click it and it gives you this neat interface that sadly is sometimes breaking. But, once you craft a recipe on it, and actually let me do that here, let me just do crops to stick, come on. You can... <laughs> why is it not... It's never done this before. I swear, this has never happened to me before. I know every guy says that, but... Come on. Huh. Well, anyway, you can then right-click on it, and you see those pink sparks. It did the recipe. So, I have all my infusion stones on me. And I have the recipes for the various essences programmed on this. And the really wonderful thing is if you hold down right click, it repeatedly crafts. So we get a little bit of lag in those pink sparks until it says not enough materials. We've crafted all of our essence dust. We've crafted all of our weak essence. We've crafted all of our strong essence. And you can get an upgraded form of it called the Manufactory Halo, which once you program in all the recipes, so long as you have the ingredients in your inventory, it'll just automatically craft to whatever. I actually kind of don't like that. The Assembly Halo, its base level, I find is fast enough and it gives you more control. I could theoretically have a Manufactory Halo and just control the level of essence I get just by having only the right stones for it in my inventory, but that's kind of a hack, and it doesn't work for everything you might use the halo for. 
You know, I went through the trouble of cloning up those lime green flowers. Might as well just get the emerald essence. I'll have the seeds shortly, and I have a similar quest for cyan powder and a bunch of other stuff that I can just farm up to get... Well, actually, charcoal blocks? That's going to be a little bit of work. So, we don't have diamonds yet. Still, I think I'm just going to get a bunch of these other seeds. Probably mostly off camera. We aren't doing another montage. Just really quick, something that I remember gave me some trouble early on in my first couple of attempts at this pack. Making cinnabar seeds, you need some quick silver. And unfortunately, there's nowhere that you can naturally find cinnabar or to get the quicksilver from. You can find amber in the nether from amber nether ore. And fortunately, using the transmutative pool, the alchemy catalyst, you can turn regular old amber into cinnabar. And that is how you get your cinnabar seeds. Okay, I think that's enough seed making for now. Here's the harvest of what we have on the current tier. We have infused shard seeds, we have redstone seeds, and these are actually almost done breeding. We have spider seeds, we have creeper seeds, doing the old square shuffle. And I don't even bother scanning when I'm breeding nowadays, I just wait until I have like all four of those seeds from the side on the same level. Because that usually means, because they stack up, they're all the same stat, and therefore they are all max. Yes, I have those... where was I last? Uh, creeper seeds. I have lapis lazuli seeds. I have amber seeds. I have those emerald seeds. I have cinnabar seeds. And just freshly made, I have glowstone seeds. Right here. Also, I have these flowers growing up to help me with the quest to get diamond essence. Although, again, the big one will be getting all the charcoal. I do all my own stunts, you know. That is the wrong chest. That's better. Okay. Now, I think that while we're doing all that, let's just make the boiler. To make a boiler, we're going to need these... Let's start with these low-pressure boiler tanks, because the high pressure requires steel. So let's make these iron plates. You saw me make a bunch of those in the rolling machine. And we are going to need we are going to need steel after all. Huh, what do you know? Okay, so in that case, to make steel, we're going to need that bloomery furnace. To make the bloomery, we are going to need a carpenter. And that is just going to require a bunch of bronze. And the rolling machine. Bronze is really simple. It's just copper and tin at 3 to 1 in the smeltery. I will get back to you when I have all that alloy... Alloyed. Yeah. That should be enough bronze to last for a little while. I figured out something about these casting channels. If you right-click on them with an empty hand, you can control where they connect to. So I've tried out a configuration of them that I'm hoping will give me an even split between these nine tables. Let's see if it works. That, that shouldn't connect. I don't think it is connecting because it's making it over there, but that's a render error. If it works, maybe I'll move the, the drain up one higher just so it looks pretty. Although, actually, this looks pretty pretty as it is. Pretty pretty. 
Yeah. This could make a pretty cool fountain. Actually, I think Tinker's Construct has... That's Life Essence. Oh, come on. Doesn't... Doesn't... Tinker's Construct have liquid blood? I could make a blood fountain. That's life essence. That's, that's close enough, but... I want proper blood. I'll look that up later. Blood fountain. That would be so metal. Well, it's not... Casting in sync, but it is reaching all these tables. I'm thinking, well, no. If it was a center bias, then... Hmm. I don't know. Either way, it's casting fairly quickly. Neat. Let's just grab a bunch of bronze. I have my rolling machine all nice and ready over here. Make that sturdy casing. Doop, 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 doop. Draining the internal buffer. Okay. And I believe to make the carpenter... Carpent diem. Yeah, just six of those and some glass. Mm -hmm. Carpenter. Dirt. There we go. Now, I don't think this steam engine can output to multiple sides. No. So, if I want to use it for both these machines, I will need to move it. Oh, that's pickaxe. I was fooled by the wooden look of it. And as you can tell, this thing is not going to be enough RF to run both these machines at full capacity. Heck, it can't even run the rolling machine at full capacity. But we don't need full capacity. We can just let it build up the buffer. Okay. Give that signal. Give that... Oh, pardon me, I need to give it water first. Thankfully, because it wasn't at temperature yet, filling it up with water when it's burning isn't disastrous. I think that if it's at full temperature and its water empties out and you try and give it water while it's still at 500 degrees Celsius, it might explode. Ooh. Pew. Pew pew. Neat. So, next up we need this creosote into the carpenter. I'll just give that two buckets. And I'm going to need to bake some bricks and do a bunch of other stuff to get the bloomery. Yes. Be back in a minute. Okay, I've got the first couple batches of bricks baked. And the way you use the carpenter is you give it the recipe up here and you put things in its storage. It remembers the recipe and I got that the wrong way around. Doop. No? It's that and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it requires a whole eight buckets worth. Oh, wow. That's that's actually quite a lot. Yeah, da, da, da.
Let's get ourselves a tank to help out with that. I probably should have been piping this creosote into these tanks anyway. Hmm. Two, three. Hmm. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and now back out into the thing. Yeah, there it goes. Now it's receiving power from the engine's buffer. It is slowly building up, and I think I have to click it just like the... No, it's just very slow. Hmm. Well, that just gives me time to bake more clay bricks, because I would like eight of these bloomeries, because they are, again, very slow. Well, I guess it was a little bit optimistic to expect this to work. It's kind of hard to tell because the rendering is screwed up after a while, but some of these tables are empty, and you can tell on Wayla that some of these tables still have liquid inside of them, so it was not an even pour. I'm going to have to clear that out and try again. Anyway, this is very slow, as I have said. So I think I'm just going to plunk down the two that I have and start working on some steel. Now, to use the bloomery furnace, you need to give it a couple things. You need to give it... We are out of sand. We need to give it sand. Let's just do that. We need to give it iron, and we need to give it charcoal. Specifically, charcoal. I've said that before. Thankfully, we don't need very much charcoal. I believe it's just one per steel, if that. No, it's one sand per steel. Okay, give it that. Give it that. Why you no go? What is your problem? Okay, what it's going to give us is wrought iron. Oh, the... It's slot specific, what do you know? Okay. Oops. Wrong click. There we go. Okay, so this is going to give us wrought iron. And we can take the wrought iron, and we can put it in a blast furnace to make steel. Which means that our next step is we are going to have to make a blast furnace. And it's three by four by three hollow, okay? So we're going to need a bunch of these construction blocks. We're going to need Essence of Blaze, that's easy. Infernal Bricks. Hmm. Where do I get these from? Okay, it must be one of these is maybe Infernal Block? Yeah, okay. So we're going to need Nether Brick and Soul Sand. That's all very easy. That's just Nether Essence. We're going to need a bunch of wrought iron. So yeah, we couldn't have built this ahead of time. We had to wait until we got the... Wow. I remember this being way slower. This looks like almost standard smelting speed. Huh. Well, anyway, we are going to need to get a ton of wrought iron. We're going to need to get a ton of nether stuff. I'll get back to you in a minute. Nice line of vats that we can use to make our bricks in mass. That's 24. Next, it'll be down to 16. Yeah, 
And then that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then it'll be down to 33. That'll all process into burnt bricks, which we need for those construction blocks. Oh, that took a while. Okay, let's see if this is enough. I haven't exactly counted these out. So, blast furnace. Three by four by three hollow. Let's just put this over here. Derp. Okay, and now we need... Oh, I made way too much. <laughs> oh, that's how it goes. Let's put some torches on top of these just so they're not spawnable. All right. The blast furnace. I don't have anywhere near enough for another one, and I'm probably going to want another one because these things, unless they've been changed, are slow. For these, I believe you want one piece of coke per piece of wrought iron. And now, we finally are going to get our hands on some steel. Ugh. Two blast furnaces. Hey, if we're going to make this not be a mistake, we have to go all in. Okay, let's make these vats a little bit less annoying. I have here a tank right next to the lava maker that I can just fill up. I'm going to run a pipe underneath it, which I'm going to just power on the side. And I think I can have a lever just down here to do that. Come on, there it goes. Okay. Now, so that this isn't absolutely hideous, let's run it down a little bit lower, underground. And I believe it just needs to go that far. Nope, that's one too far. There we go. Link these all up. And there we have it. Pipes all connected. Now let's backfill. There we go. That looks mostly out of the way. And now, when I put a bucket of lava in there, starts filling these things up. So I can just sit here and do this. You know what? Uh, maybe I should move it a couple spaces to the left. Eh. Yeah. Nah. This is thoughtless enough for me. It isn't fully automatic, but it's Close enough. Close enough for government work. All right. I believe this should be everything necessary to form up the multi-block. Yes. This thing will convert burnables in its interface into heat, and eventually it will start converting heat into steam faster and faster and faster. Well, it'll convert heat and water into steam. To make it fully workable, we need a dedicated build craft pump. And this is fairly easy. The only reason I don't have a billion of these, of these things already is they've required redstone. So, 
first step is to make those gear burrs. Making them this way means you don't have to walk up the steps of the buildcraft gear tiers. Two gears. I think it needs two gears. No, it only needs one. Oh well. Gears are always useful. For those. Oh, one of those. And it's going to need two tanks, which I do. I'm finally running out of glass. So let's just bake up a stack of glass. You can tell that I'm tired. I think that once I have this thing fully set up, it's end of episode for the night. Cannot wait until I have electric smelters. Could automate these. Well, actually, I have steel now. What do logistics pipes use? Logistical sorter is something I... Uh, for that, I'm going to need those control circuits. Yeah, I'm going to need it for that, too. And for that, I'm going to need enriched iron, which is going to require a metallurgic infuser. And I'm going to need these circuit boards, which is going to require that. And I'm going to need lasers. And oh dear, why are the fancy pipes so late in the game? Okay, let's see if I can remember this. Two tanks, which I think go down here. Redstone up here, gear in the center. Four of those. What goes down below? A bucket. I forgot. Well, I have a spare bucket right here. Excellent. Now I just need four redstone engines to power it. So I'm going to need that. Going to need all six of these levers because I'm going to need two levers to turn them on. Going to need a bunch of wood. Going to need a bunch of cobble. And I think that's it. So that, that, zot, and zot. Gets us our four pistons. And I'm going to need more sticks than that. Okay, so two, three, four, because I think each of these will give me eight more sticks. There we go. So there's that. There's that. I could semi-automate these furnaces with buildcraft pipes, but then you have to deal with overflows, and it's just like, uh... Okay. Okay, and finally, I think I'm just going to make myself another bucket so I have two of them to drag with me. Because I'm going to need a source of water beneath the pump. And let's just build this right directly beneath the boiler. Good thing it's not heated up yet, because that would actually vent all the heat. Mm -hmm. Let's go down one more. OK. 
Okay. Now let's fill in this entire area. Okay, this is way too big. Dirt and construction. Huzzah. Okay, so we can put the pump right here. We can make these four engines facing inward into it. And can I just snoop the block over to there, into there? Get those levers working it. Yeah, let's put you down properly just because. All four of those working, and I don't think this needs a wooden pipe. I think a golden pipe will do. Yes, it do. Okay, and now backfill that. Let's just leave some torches down there just in case. <sighs> okay. So, next up I'm going to start filling this thing with coal blocks. It will burn them. It'll take like an hour to heat up. And while it is heating up, I will be making, using our new double blast furnace setup, uh, indus. these industrial steam engines, which are just basically a bunch of steel and a piston and some redstone. Now, each of these will use up 40 millibuckets of steam per tick. And these high-pressure boilers produce 20. Okay. So, well, there's 9, 18, 27 of them. So I'm going to be looking at 13 of those generators, I guess. Yeah. That sounds about right. <sighs> and that should produce, let's see, each one of them produces... ...80 RF per tick. So, 80 by 13 will get us a little over a thousand RF per tick. And that should be a pretty hefty power base to start making lasers and other such high-tech things. But that, I think, is all gonna have to wait for tomorrow. Well, you know what? Just for the sake of celebration, let me make ourselves some coal blocks. And let's fire the thing up for the first time together. Just a bunch of that. A bunch of that. Mm -hmm. Oops. My emergency night vision potion. Okay. Ah. And yep, it is very slowly heating up. Okay, I am exhausted. I think I accidentally recorded enough for like two or three episodes. With all the journeying and derping and making entire industrial processes that I didn't actually need yet and all that. Next episode, we have infused shard seeds, and that is what we need to start getting into Thawncraft, 
and thong prep is what we need to start automating crop harvesting, which will allow me to automatically keep this thing stocked. So, next episode we'll be starting into Thaumcraft. I know I've been talking about it a lot, but Thaumcraft is pretty major. I'll see you then.